Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always, of course, of course, I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours, be a bit weird if I wasn't really. Anywho, we're going to kick things off today with a little something regarding TSMC's 5NM, as they announced yesterday that they have completed the infrastructure design for the 5NM process, and it is going to be utilising the second gen of EUV, or Extreme Ultraviolet Tech, which is going to mean we're going to see performance benefits as well as that ever important improved yield. So, according to the report from TSMC, which of course is going to be linked in the description below this video, we're going to be seeing a 1.8 times increase in logic density versus their 7nm process and a 15% clock speed gain due to process improvements alone. And this was done on an example ARM Cortex A72 core. And we're also going to see a higher number of chips per wafer. Now, according to them, risk production is already ongoing. Now, I've covered the most pertinent information here, but again, you can read the full report from TSMC. But I do have a bit of a statement here from one of their partners, the president of Cadence, Dr. Anna Ruth Devgan, who says, quote, Building upon several years of close collaborations with TSMC, we've advanced 5NM SOC design innovation across next-gen mobile, HPC, and infrastructure application areas like AI and 5G, and have advanced our tools with machine learning capabilities to improve power, performance, and area outcomes. To further support the production and delivery of TSMC's 5NM design infrastructure, Cadence has undergone TSMC's latest 5NM version 1.0 certification process. So yeah, there's more blurbs and stuff from other partners of TSMC, but again, that all is linked below. Speaking of TSMC, however, we have a little something from AMD next. And according to a report from WCCFTech.com, AMD are going to be holding a partner summit this month, April the 23rd, to be exact. Now, according to WCCF's sources, both Navi and 7NM chips are going to be on the docket for discussion. And that does mean, of course, the 7NM Ryzen 3000 series. Of course, we have seen 12NM Ryzen 3000 already released, and we have heard basically nothing about Navi. So, of course, we don't know what, if anything, is going to be discussed in terms of, like, they could just say, yeah, AMD Navi is coming, rough release window of X, and that's all they say, or they could go into a bit more information, a bit more detail, sorry, should I say. All we know is that it's on the docket, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be getting information. And obviously, even if critical information is discussed, there's no guarantee that it's going to leak, of course. But hopefully, we're going to get at least the release date for both, and hopefully more details regarding Navi as well. We've heard a lot about Ryzen 2, of course, uh, Zen 2, sorry, should I say. But we've heard, again, zero, essentially, official regarding Navi. Little bits here and there. I'm being a little bit facetious, but we, I'm hungry for more information about Navi, okay? So hopefully we get some more. Uh, but even if we don't hear anything here, we can expect to hear more later on in the year. As we, of course, have a confirmation that AMD are going to be at Computex. So, what else do I have for you today? Well... Got a bit of an update about that Valve VR headset. And if you're surprised to hear me saying those words again, um, trust me, I'm surprised to be saying them because, well, you may recall not too long ago I discussed the teaser that we had of the Valve Index VR device and we weren't expecting to hear anything until at least May. But someone at Valve did a bit of an oopsie and basically partial information on their product pages for the headset, base stands and controllers were all published prematurely on Steam. Now, these were only up for a few hours, but unsurprisingly, everything on the internet is forever, and screenshots and stuff were grabbed before they were taken down. Now, as I said, the years are partial. The product pages were not complete, so there is still more information to be gleaned at a later date. But we do know more information than we previously did, but it's not exactly difficult because we knew basically nothing before, other than the fact that this was a thing that existed. So, the official announcement date is going to be May the 1st, and that's also going to be when the device is going to be available for pre-order. So, the complete package itself is going to obviously have the headset, which is going to include integrated headphones, a tether cable, which is DisplayPort 1.2, and also USB 3.1 Gen 1, as well as, of course, your region-specific power adapter, plugs, 
and two face gaskets, both narrow and wide. Interestingly, however, previously we did think that the index controllers were going to be included, at least in the sort of, sort of bare bones base uh, headset, and that seems to not to be the case. At least in this particular product listing, they were an optional separate purchase. That was also the case with the index at base station. So that could probably mean that there's going to be a bundle with all of them. That's going to be more expensive, of course. But Valve are offering people the option to just have the headset. So does that mean it's going to support the Vive controllers? Yes, I would think probably so. And most likely it's going to support traditional controllers and of course keep on a mouse input as well. Unfortunately, one of the things that was not included on the product page was the price. Valve have said that they are still finalizing this. As Valve have done it actually the opposite of what people normally do, which is of course deny everything and say, oh no, that no, we can't comment, no, we don't comment on rumors and speculation. They've said no, this is all accurate, um, but more information is coming on May the 1st. Now the last thing that you probably noticed on this product page is indeed the shipping date, which is June the 15th, 2019. Whether or not that exact date is going to be accurate, they are aiming for June at least, it seems. But that's not the only Steam thing I have for you today, no, 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 as Steam geoblocking is apparently in breach of EU antitrust laws. Now, in case you're wondering what on earth geoblocking is, it pretty much is what it says on the tin for a certain amount of games. Say, for example, you live in, oh, I don't know, Germany, just, just to give an example, and you buy a code on the cheap from another EU country with some games, I do stress some, that code would not work because it would be geo-blocked. Now, the European Union have basically said that this is in violation of their EU antitrust laws and even went out to single out numerous and major publishers including ZeniMax, Bandai and Focus Home Interactive. And I do have a bit of a statement here from the EU Commissioner. Uh, Marguerite Vestager, who said, quote, in a true digital single market, European consumers should have the right to buy and play video games of their choice, regardless of where they live in the EU. Consumers should not be prevented from shopping around between member states to find the best available deal. Valve and the five PC video game publishers now have the chance to respond to our concerns. Now, at present, anti-geoblocking regulations do only cover physical media, so this pretty much points to them planning on expanding the ads to cover digital. So for the moment at least, their complaints only applies to activation codes that Valve gives over to third party sellers like say for example Green Man Gaming, just to give an example off the top of my head. But Valve itself could very much be a target of this in the future. And according further to the EU, they could face a fine of up to quote 10% of the annual worldwide turnover of the company. So if they do find themselves at the business end of this threat, they're going to be setting up and taking notice for sure. Now, interestingly, Valve has responded, and you'll see why I stressed the fact that this is only some games so much. As they said, quote, Today the European Commission sent statements of objections to Valve and five publishers in an investigation that it started in 2013. The EC alleges that the five publishers entered into agreements with their distributors that, that included geo-blocking provisions for PC games sold by the distri distributors, and separately Valve entered an agreement, into agreement, should I say, sorry, with the same publishers that prevented consumers in the European economic area from purchasing PC games because of their location. Region locks only apply to a small number of game titles. Approximately just 3% of all games using Steam, and none of Valve's own games, at the time were subject to the contested region locks in the EEA. Valve believes that the EC's extension of liability to a platform provider in these circumstances is not supported by applicable law. Nonetheless, because of the EC's concern, Valve actually turned off region locks within the EEA starting in 2015, unless those region locks were necessary for local legal requirements such as German content laws or geographic limits on where the Steam partner is licensed to distribute the game. The elimination of region locks will also mean that publishers will likely raise prices in less affluent regions to provide to avoid price arbitrage. So whether or not the EU is going to be happy with that response, I don't know, because they're probably going to turn around and say, okay, it might only be 3% according to you, but that's still 3% more than it should be, and they wouldn't be technically incorrect when they do end up expanding these laws, as I've already said. So Valve do have a valid point that it may result in more expensive games, but this is definitely going to be one to watch for sure to see the results of what actually happens here. 
So, we're going to finish things off with arguably some good news for Windows 10 users. Now, as you undoubtedly know, even if you haven't upgraded to Windows 10 or put it off for as long as possible, Microsoft enforced six months update cycles, whether you wanted it or not. And now Microsoft has decided to put that in the bin. Finally, following this change from Microsoft, you will no longer be forced into these updates and you'll also have the ability to pause updates and also remove them. Now, naturally, you cannot do this forever, which is fair enough, I think, actually. They've given a more than generous period of 18 months. So basically, that is when the end of life will be reached for major Windows 10 versions. So once you've postponed for 18 months, which I don't think very many people are going to do, but you never know, your PC will then be forced to update to the latest version. Now, there is full details on the Microsoft blog, which is going to be linked in the description below this video, but I will provide you with a brief quote from it. Quote, download and install now options provides users a separate control to initiate the installation of a feature update on eligible devices with no known key blocking compatibility issues. Users can still check for updates to get monthly quality and security updates. Windows will automatically initiate a new feature update if the new version of Windows 10 is nearing end of support. We may notify you when a feature, feature update is available and ready for your machine. All Windows 10 devices with a supported version will continue to automatically receive the monthly updates. This new download and install option will also be available for our most popular versions of Windows 10, versions 1803 and 1809 by late May. Now of course this isn't going to be the only thing included in the Windows 10 update, naturally it's going to be massive, but again you can find full details of what's going on here in their lovely Microsoft blog which I have linked below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, bearing with me through this rather lengthy video. It turned out much longer than I thought, and that's, yes, that is what she said. Anywho, that's me done, as I said, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.